everyone welcome thanks very much for tuning in um, I always say to leave questions and comments at the end of the video so that I can answer back and uh, try and help you and answer questions you might have but I'm finding that the um, apart from being pretty time-consuming um, I'm just repeating myself with questions all the time and uh, so I thought if I would just sit in and take the time to do a bit of a vlog and talk about myself and the guitar and answer all your questions and uh, bring Ollie and Sid back into it. This is Sid right here and Ollie. He's a good boy but he swears a bit. <clears throat> but anyhow, uh, I thought yeah we'll just we'll just sit down and, and, and try and talk about the guitars and answer questions and help you all out. And uh, Okay, well, the first question, I'm going to try and answer them in, in order that I get asked of, uh, of popularity, I suppose, or the questions that I find myself repeating the most. But first off, um, a lot of you ask about what job I do and what career I've got, but um, I don't get paid for playing guitars. I'd love to. Uh, I do pick up a few slight endorsements through YouTube on the way, like I get sent, I've been sent um, that Hot Mod 800 pedal from Texas Harmonic, which was really cool. Uh, just random emails out of the blue. Um, I got my money back from the software I bought from Positive Grid for the bias through those videos I was doing. So you do get an opportunity for a few bit of recognition endorsements, but um, all in all, uh, YouTube doesn't pay the bills at all. Um, when it comes to in, when it comes to being on the partner program and getting paid for your videos, uh, I don't get paid for any covers that I do. Uh, that's all someone else's content. On my own songs, reviews, gear reviews, these sorts of things, I get about um, I don't know. It worked out to be about a dollar every thousand hits. So don't don't sit by the mailbox for that one. Uh, what else can I talk about? Oh, my career. Uh, well, I'm, I'm an aircraft mechanic. Uh, engines and airframes. Uh, I've been doing that since 1996. Um, I've worked on all, mostly military aircraft. I've been, I was in the Air Force for uh, 11 years and picked up government contracts for the military after that just maintaining the aircraft and I'm also uh, oh sorry I have two trades one's the airframe engine side of things and the other's the structures and composites and sheet metal so uh, but anyhow I'm currently the, my job just closed uh, the end of last month and so hence shaving the beard off and looking respectable I've got to find another job um, I have found one but it involves a bit of travel and the cushy life that I've had for the last eight years has uh, come, come to a screaming halt so I've been working for a living and uh, going away for two, three weeks at a time but um, I'm not sure how that's going to impact the YouTube, I don't really want it to have a, have a negative impact on it but I'm sure it will but I was thinking in that time I'll try and um, I'll try and just write songs while I'm away and then come back in that week or two and and, and uh, give you some, some Lamb Chopper songs rather than covers all the time. I think if I've got the time there to write then um, I get pretty excited about writing a lot of songs. I just don't have the time to do it so this could be a perfect opportunity. Um, okay, so that was a pretty long-winded spiel. But next we'll um, uh, move on to, I get, on those Megadeth covers I did, I get asked every video, every second comment is, which guitar is better, the RR5 or the, uh, the uh, Dean VMNT from Dave Mustaine V. And honestly, they're both killer guitars. Um, I love them. They're very different from each other. Uh, 
the the RR5 is a complete package. It's it's really nice to hold. It's light. It sounds really thick. It's got that real Marty Friedman uh, mid range to it. That's excellent for solos. Uh, I know, but the Mustang one, even though it's a great guitar, I'm sure it's not for everyone. It's 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 like a it's a big guitar for starters. It's got a wide fretboard, very flat fretboard. Uh, the narrow frets on it, they're not jumbo. I'm not a fan of narrow frets. I like the the large, larger radius frets, like your hands slide around a little bit easier on them. Uh, but the neck's like a D profile, very wide, and it's a long feeling guitar. It's big in your, even for me, I, I get told a lot like with other uh, comments saying that I must be bloody huge because the guitars all look tiny in my hands. It's not the case, it's just, I'm just normal height, six foot one, but uh, that guitar is a big guitar to hold. And I find it very comfortable and it's got a really deep tone to it, but uh, it's not for everyone. Okay, so if you can and, you, and you're concerned about what guitar to buy, like a, a, a King V or a, an ESP V2 sort of thing, or a V600, or the Dave Mustang King V, uh, Angel of Death. Uh, I'll try and really have a go and play them all and see which one you think is, is best for you because they're all good in their own way. Another one, which which brand of guitars is your favourite and why? I love Jackson guitars, always have. All my favourite players have, have used them over the years. Uh, and, and what's more about it, every Jackson guitar I've bought, I don't know how many I've bought because I sell a lot as well. Uh, every single one I've ever bought has been perfect. Um, I've not had a lemon. I've not had one that's a dub. I've not had one that's uh, like turned up with a warped neck or anything like that. I do a lot of internet buying only because Australia's very expensive with their importing. But, um, and I guess I'm a bit of a Scrooge like that. But, um, no, every Jackson I've ever bought has been perfect. They all sound fantastic. And um, and yeah, I, I just I just really like it. The uh, I don't know which Jackson I have is my favourite. They're all great. The, even the the Adrian Smith, the Sam Dimas one, the, the SDX. It was like five hundred bucks, and uh, that that thing is killer. I've I've since put upgraded the Floyd Rose as one of the little saddles broke. The cast saddles and saddles in the Floyd Rose special. It, it's sheared and I replaced that with the steel Floyd Rose and uh, upgraded pickups and things, but that was so worth it. It's it's amazing guitar for the money. You know, it's, it was half the price of the Charvel here. There's nothing wrong with that. I did have dramas when I first bought it, but uh, they actually gave me all my money back. So I can't really sit here and bag the company. Uh, oh, covers. Covers and requests. I know, I, I want to try and entertain you all and fulfill your covers that you ask of me and and um, we all want to see covers of our favourite songs but uh, I've been doing so many covers for a lot of years now and um, almost if I'm not 100% into the song because they take a fair bit to learn and I sit down and I really you have to be a hundred percent on wanting to play that cover, otherwise you you just give a half-assed cover back, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to give you a one of your favourite songs. I don't want to return it as a as a mediocre cover that I haven't paid a hundred percent attention to, or hitting all the notes and things. So I find it's easier if I just play what I feel like playing on the day, and. Uh, and I'm really into it then, like, if I really like a song, I'll, I'll put so much more effort into the cover, and, and I enjoy every second that I'm doing that, and uh, I think that that gives you guys a better, some better viewing, and, and it's more enjoyable for everyone. Uh, I have, I did a few covers in the past where I sort of forced myself with requests just to keep up with demands, but um, look, it sucked, it, it, I didn't like it. I didn't, I didn't enjoy doing the cover, I didn't want to 
it, it, it made it seem like it's a job and not a, an enjoyable hobby. So I'm sorry to, to tell you that news, but but I have to be have to be honest about it all. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, uh, oh, I will do something about the Mesomark 525 I've just got. Uh, so excited. I've wanted, uh, I don't know how many years I've wanted one for, since 88, 89, uh, for a Mesom. And they're ridiculously dear in Australia for the, you know, I, I see them on eBay all the time in the US for about $2,000 and, and uh, if I want to buy one in Australia, they're about 5,700. So, and uh, the import people have a deal with Meza, so they Meza can't no no dealers send out of the U.S. But they're just starting to now. And uh, anyway, I was in that because of that, I bought one, and I love it. It's so cool. Uh, so I've still got the EVH fifty one fifty, and those two amps. Is it? Uh, okay. Next, we move on. Uh, oh, tabs. Every second question's uh, for me to pass the tabs along that I've used to learn my songs. Look, I, I, I don't really like tabs. I don't use them that often. Um, I have a cupboard here full of books that I bought in my teens when I was, you know, I relied on tabs because I hadn't developed my ear at all. But um, honestly, many years playing out of those Cherry Lane, Hal Leonard books, and uh, the tabs in those are sometimes absolutely abysmal. You know, I, I just... I can't believe that they printed such inaccurate information, you know. And so a lot of nowadays I get I get a lot of comments saying, you know, that was a good cover, but you played it completely wrong. You know, my my authorized edition tab book says that it's on the fifth fret. You know, um, I try every single time to on most covers to look up live footage of the artist or see lessons and, and try and play it the same way. If not, I use um, like Riff Station. I'm sure you see ads for Riff Station on YouTube all the time. It's a really cool bit of software and you can slow things down and semi sort of isolate guitars out of it and extract, like take out frequencies and push others up. And you can really isolate like left and right guitars and solos and things. So I really try and hit every single note that I hear um, and I'll yeah, learn it from the artist. If I'm really stuck, I will go to Ultimate, Gu Ultimate Guitar and just check out some tabs for like, really fast runs. And sometimes that's just a good way to, to check with yourself if you're in the ballpark or, um, or in, in the right direction. But I, on, a, on a whole, I, I don't rely on tabs one little bit. You know, the, the, the classic is the old Injustice for All book that I bought when I was about 13 years old and I trusted that book for, for years and uh, like it was telling you on the intro in black and that it's on the D string on the second fret and you half mute it and give it it's not even it was like it was so wrong the, the tabs were so wrong it it's left a bad taste in my mouth about using tabs so I'm, so the, the, the quicker we can all sit down and learn from the music and develop our ears, I think the better random musicians we can be and we identify patterns. Oh, and... yes, hey. Come on, mate. I'm talking. Um, where was I? Anyway, yeah, tabs. So that's my view on tabs. I try not to use them. Uh, not that I try not to. I just prefer not to. I, I like to sit down. I like to work things out. I like to use my ears. I like to... It's part of the challenge of just playing a song. And you get a better feel for how the artist is playing, you know. You, you get a whole... You, you, you couldn't sit down and, and and just read the tabs for Jimmy Page or Jimi Hendrix or and, and play it and have the same flair and style as they did. You've really got to adapt the way that they're... they're and get their whole vibe in their playing. But um, I hope... hope Hope you enjoyed it. I hope I haven't bored the crap out of you talking about these sorts of things. But uh, the yeah. next the next time someone has another question that I've answered a lot of times, I'll be able to refer them to this vlog and uh, and uh, I'll, I'll try and keep up and and 
keep pushing out videos for you, but yeah, it is going to slow down in the new year until I find a, another job permanent that's around home. Uh, we're in a bit of a lull at the moment and work's a little bit hard to come by. But um, yeah, thank you and take care. Uh, and best luck in the new year. Bye-bye.